What's going on, people? What's going Nick, on, guys? Nick Lessivore here. Brandon Delakiak. Exit 12 Brewery. In the house. My man. Switch it up on him. <laughs> uh, so today, we have a lot going on here at the headquarters of Exit 12. Yep. Uh, we have a cranberry pale ale that today Brandon and I are going to be transferring to secondary and adding fresh cranberries from a local farm. Yep. About uh, two... I think it ended up being about uh, two and a quarter pounds of uh, cranberries that I cut up in half and we froze them. So basically the idea, for those of you that aren't familiar with utilizing fruit and primary, secondary, things like that, is there are different ways to get the, um, you know, the, the germs and things off of fruit. One is to wash them, mm -hmm. uh, but the, one of the best ways to do it is, so I washed the cranberries and then we froze them and yep. freezing them kind of kills the unnecessary uh, germs and things like that that can infect the beer. Correct. Yep. So we have, uh, but like I said, about two and a quarter. I'd have to go back and look at the official numbers uh, exactly, but we're going to be transferring that into secondary, into a carboy. We'll probably let that sit for a week, mm -hmm. and then we will either bottle or keg it, depending on how much space we have in the kegerator. Right now we have the apple cinnamon brown mm -hmm. and one of our New England pails. Yeah, absolutely. So last year we did uh, five pounds of cranberries for this beer, and beautiful color, uh, but it drank closer to a sour with all that cranberry in there. So we're trying to subdue that a little more so we can get some of the, the pale ale flavors to come through, because last year it really was very tart. Um, so I think two and a half is hopefully our sweet spot, so that should, uh, that should give us some great cranberry flavor, but also have the pale ale. Uh, backbone for sure and then secondly the second thing we're doing is we're going to be bottling Brandon's um, brew child as I like to call it the basic bitch uh, <laughs> pumpkin a, uh, yeah stout it's a pumpkin sweet stout uh, it's a pumpkin spice latte sweet stout uh, it's the first recipe that I did so you know it, it's definitely one that that I you know near and dear to my heart uh, we're going to be using, I, we got some cold brew coffee, uh, pumpkin spiced uh, roasted cold brew coffee that we're going to put in. We're also going to put in a little um, pumpkin spice extract to try to bump up that flavor. We really want this to shine with pumpkin, uh, pumpkin spice, not pumpkin. Um, yeah. And we're basically looking for this to be more of a pumpkin beer and not, you know, a beer flavored pumpkin, <laughs> pretty much. So we, we want the pumpkin to play off of the malt uh, bill, the grain bill that we created, uh, and just kind of uh, meld with these different flavors, hopefully resembling something close to like a pumpkin latte. We basically, what we used, we used dextrose, about just under three and a quarter ounces of dextrose, so maybe a little bit on the higher end, mm -hmm. but um, we're looking, in overall, it's actually pretty low. You probably use close to uh, five, you know, ounces or so yeah. in the, in so what we're basically doing is kind of creating a little bit of a uh, carbonation, but hopefully nothing overly carbonated. Yeah, no, definitely. For and, the uh, sweet side, we don't want it too carbonated. And we basically prefer to bottle our stouts as opposed to put them on draft because we don't have the equipment um, set up to be able to pour uh, stouts on draft. So we, we like to bottle them, especially when we're utilizing milk sugar, which we did in this beer. Yeah. Uh, we actually, I actually screwed this beer up. Uh, we dumped about four gallons of it on brew day as we were putting in the uh, wort chiller. Yeah. So that was fun. Uh, so we had to create <laughs> four gallons of kind of a new grain bill utilizing very close to the same uh, grains that we had, but we, we had to substitute a few. Yeah, this is a little Frankenstein beer because... Uh, like I said, we had we definitely had to, to meld some stuff together, but I think they were close enough where it should be very unnoticeable in the beer, hopefully. Hopefully. <laughs> we're going we're gonna to find out in about two weeks. But uh, we're going to get to bottling now and uh, show you guys the process.
we just got done bottling the stout. Mm -hmm. We ended up with uh, four and a half gallons. Uh, as you can see, uh, our FG ended up being at 020. Yeah. We would have liked it uh, a little bit lower, but uh, we finished at 5.2%. Um, we were looking for 5.6, so, you know, not horribly bad. <laughs> yeah, 65% attenuation. Uh, considering we actually attenuated higher than uh, than what the uh, what what beer Smith said we were going to uh, uh, end up attenuating at so again I dumped four gallons of it so it's kind of ended up being a bit of an experimental beer yeah both things considered probably ended up okay <laughs> yeah yeah we still we still wanted to continue with the normal things we were additions adjuncts we were going to, we were going to put in it yep you know the pumpkin coffee the pumpkin flavoring things like that yep uh, just because I dumped four gallons we weren't gonna stop um, we weren't gonna stop what our vision was for the beer essentially yep yeah I think uh, I think we should get pretty close to what we were thinking this is an annual beer anyway so uh, next year we'll just adjust the recipe adjust the recipe <laughs> and, and go from there. Yeah, so what we're going to do now is um, we're going to put our Friendsgiving Cranberry Pale Ale into secondary and yep. add the cranberries. So let's get started. Mm -hmm. 